So uh, thank you everybody for being here. Before we get started, just want to note a couple of things. We'll have a quick Q&A session here at the end. If you have any questions, just put them in the chat function and we can address them as we go or at the end. Uh, this workshop will also be recorded and edited and we'll send it out to everybody via email afterwards. So if there's anything you want to share with your team, that's a really good opportunity to do so. Um, those couple of things out of the way, just want to introduce Brad Waldo, our special guest speaker here today. Um, Brad is a seasoned professional with a diverse background in the fields of cybersecurity and telecommunications. As a dedicated member of the LastPass MSP program, Brad leverages his expertise to drive secure and efficient password management solutions for businesses and managed service providers alike. With a strong commitment to safeguarding digital assets, he works diligently to help organizations fortify their cybersecurity posture. LastPass is one of the world's largest and best password management platforms. Uh, they provide secure encrypted password management, dark web monitoring, and a secure platform to share and monitor your organization's passwords. And with that, Brad, we'll just have you take it away. Hey, thank you, Damian. Uh, thank you all for letting me be here with you all today. I know you got a lot going on, very busy. So I appreciate you taking a few moments of your time to be able to um, listen and hopefully learn and find some ways to um, improve your uh, business and improve your security posture. I mean, there's two or three ways that LastPass can really help your organization from a security perspective, from an operations perspective, from just time management even, uh, to make things hopefully easier for you. So got some slides for you today. Uh, we'll talk through, hopefully hit some things that maybe you haven't thought about or you know some things that maybe maybe reinforce some assumptions that maybe you've had and how we can help you and then answer some questions here at the end. So, you know, with, in a world, if you're thinking about your people, they are the perimeter and the new perimeter for your business. And over the past decade, businesses have spent time and money hardening the security core of applications and for their privileged users. Um, they are also making targeted cybersecurity investments into identity tools like SSO, MFA, um, identity providers, as well as privileged access management or PAM. Um, however, uh, what comes on the scene is a new generation of cloud choices. Uh, with the rise of permanency of remote and flexible work, end users have been adopting cloud apps that are not SSO protected um, now more than ever. So really just thinking about what are your people using? Sometimes you hear that called um, you know, shadow IT and just people, are, I kind of joke sometimes that people are like water. They're going to find a way through. So if there's something that they need to do and there's a way to do it, maybe IT doesn't have a solution, they're going to do it themselves. And that maybe is the most convenient option, but maybe not the most secure option. So that's created an ever expanding attack surface across every function of a business. So not just thinking about, you know, how do my IT protected or my internal users, but thinking through marketing, legal, HR, IT, sales, finance, operations, really every department is using critical apps that contain business data and sensitive information. This expanding exposure point that bad actors continue to attack time and time again in their relentless search for people's credentials that they know can be compromised due to bad behavior. Passwords um, of these unprotected cloud apps are easy entry points for attackers. They're sure to bet for getting access to accounts information stored within. You know, I think of um, examples that I've had. I know municipalities where a person's Google email for their Gmail, they logged into it, they're working to their personal Gmail, that password got compromised. It happened to be the same password. They used everything else at work, and it shut that municipality down for like a month. It cost them thousands of dollars in labor, and then thousands where they paid the ransomware. Um, and then the keys were given to them, but the keys weren't given in whatever order. So they had to sit there and guess what keys went in what order. And it was a huge undertaking and a huge mess for them. So think about this. Compromised credentials are the number one threat facing businesses. 80% of data breaches. That's not our stat. That's Verizon's. Uh, with 80% of data breaches being the result of compromised credentials um, and passwords are at the heart of this crisis. The majority of attacks target human behavior, human error and poor password habits. It, I can definitely say before I worked for LastPass and some other companies, my big trick for changing passwords is this month it was 12, next month it's 13, following month it's just the number 14. So I'm leaving the same password, I'm just changing one number. Pretty bad habit. I definitely can say that I had that terribly. Um, it's never been more clear that password safety truly sits with the, with the employees. They are not making the great choices. I mean, it's just they use, reuse, like I was just saying, they reuse it, they memorize them, uh, they don't update it if they're compromised. You know, we hear about, 
you know, different companies having a password being exposed. And that might have been your one password with that company, but it was the same one you use for the rest of your stuff. So the rest of your stuff is still pretty much out there because they can make an assumption that if your password for Facebook was your dog, most likely your password for Apple is also your dog's name. So they will make those leaps of assumptions. Yet they do this all knowing it's not right. We all do. I mean, we uh, we need to give a better way, something that's, um, that because of these risk and behaviors expose many security challenges, there has to be a solution that you can give to your employees or for your company that's going to make it easy to use while being secure. Um, while security is the goal, we achieve through simplicity for the end user. It's got to be easy. The simplicity and the convenience comes from changing human behavior because ultimately human behavior is the weakest link when it comes to password security and falling victim to the compromised credential crisis. Um, just I keep kind of interjecting um, with personal stories versus just only reading off the slides here for everybody. But I had a friend of mine that worked in the U.S. government and every month the U.S. senator would call him and ask him to change the password back to what it was the month before outside of the, the policies. So the policy wouldn't allow it. He couldn't do it. So he would call into HR or I mean into IT and have them force it back to the same password. So guy was in office for how many years and never once changed his passwords. Um, these poor habits are common in every single business. We hear about these challenges from our clients like Holtcat and University of Oklahoma every single day. Uh, there is a commonality in these challenges from a lack of visibility and control to ensuring proper password hygiene um, to driving that password protection across all devices, including at home, um, to protecting sensitive information often sent in emails and text, and of course sharing passwords with others both internally and externally. The shared link, the extent of in which this behavior is embedded in the organization, in culture, in employees' daily habits, and in, in, it's ingrained and it makes challenging to resolve. So, I mean, all of us can think of sharing an Excel spreadsheet in Google Drive with the passwords in a business because it's small and it's quick and it's easy and, you know, no one is going to hurt. I mean, the, the people are my family until they're not. I mean, things happen and then all of a sudden that information is exp completely exposed um and lead to some pretty bad things that have obviously you can think of what could happen where somebody leaves an organization on bad terms and they have an entire spreadsheet of every password let's talk about uh what you need in a solution to address these dimensions to enable pervasive passwordless protection and solve for compromised credentials across the entire business you need to manage passwords as any other important user experience provide it visibility and control Keep access simple for the end user, fast on and offboarding and embracing passwordless options. You must empower your IT with a robust admin experience, reporting, policies, scale adoption, manage with automation, set policies with people and apps, prioritize risks, no specialized expertise needed. And really the one thing I like to highlight real quick is just that policy and reporting. You know, with any company, with any organization, People will not take action without policy and supporting it. And that's not just policy within a software, but also policy sitting in your HR documents. What can you have there that's going to support that this is a company initiative? And then the reporting. Is it being used? Is it being used correctly? And if it is being used correctly, how can you use that to your benefit? You can take reporting from something like this to your cyber insurance and say, hey, we have a great cyber score for our password use that's backed by our IT and backed by LastPass. And that might go a long way for your cyber insurance. Um, offer ability to continuously measure cybersecurity password health, dashboards, visualization, real-time analytics, security scores, password strength, what you know, what's weak, what's reused, what's missing. Um, in your mind, you might think you have a strong password, but it's, you know, until you have an objective observer scanning and analyzing it, do you really know what kind of, what true shape you already are in? Understand the shape, user's behavior and adoption, complete observability, utilization rates over time, spot inactive users and at risk credentials. Somebody hasn't logged in for a while, they're not using it. And they're putting you at risk and they're putting your dollars at risk and your business at risk. Finally, offer integrations into your existing cybersecurity stack. Uh, federation with SSO and identity providers and directory services, detailed reporting, app integrations. A lot of that goes into that ease of use. You know, I have where uh, with LastPass, you can have it set up to where if you turn somebody off in the system, it automatically logs them out of their passwords. So before they have a chance to be in a bad mood, you, you already have your company protected. 
amorphous uh, lost or stolen device. Somebody steals a phone that isn't protected correctly, and you're worried about your password being accessed, you can force that lost phone to be logged out and you're protected still. More than just saving it to your notes app. You save your passwords to your notes app, that's you're leaving yourself at risk. The situation requires um, a shift to what LastPass calls a pervasive passwordless protection. The good news is forward-thinking businesses around the globe have found the answer, and that answer is LastPass. These companies are expanding cybersecurity protections for all users by including passwords as part of their strategy. U University of Oklahoma saw a 99% increase in password hygiene after they deployed LastPass. Mary Kay, a global organization, um, has over 3,000 employees using LastPass in 40 countries. And HopeCat has secured over 350 applications with LastPass, showing just how many cloud applications um, that are based apps are not protected by SSO. Their success is a direct result of the fact that LastPass is enabled to support and help you with this shift away from the current ways of working to that passwordless protection. No, and now and as we continue to reduce reliance on passwords in the future, from no visibility of apps beyond SSO to complete observability and management, from no control to governance and standardization policies that help shape behavior, from these islands of usage to pervasive use across every department, and from guesswork and no way of to measure the impact to demonstrated efficacy. So, I mean, thinking about this, it's just that passwordless. I can click on the app within the browser there for LastPass. It sends an alert to my phone. I scan it. It says, okay, it scans my face and I'm in. I didn't have to type a password. I didn't have to know certain things. I made it super easy. And then I can get in there, click launch on an app and I'm logged in. And if I need to share that, I can share it through LastPass in a way that never exposes the password. So this is all about making it, once it's established, quick, easy, secure, efficient, all ways to save you money. You know, you think about some of these things sometimes where I have to try and track down somebody to get logged into in a device and they're at lunch and I'm sitting there for an hour. You've lost that hour of pay. So think about this in different ways of not just what it could be if something happens and I'm, you know, and I'm ransomed for some crazy amount of money that it's hard to put a number on. Just the everyday life of I got to get logged in and so and so no longer works in a company and that password left with them or it's in a vault there and I'm instantly at it. So it's about protecting your information. You know, I think of it sometimes like when an employee leaves, you wouldn't let them keep a key to the company vehicle. So why would we let them keep the passwords? We can start helping you make an impact today. Whether you're looking to improve the sharing of passwords in your business, meet regulatory or audit requests, monitor credentials on the dark web, meet MFA mandates coming from your cyber insurance and more. We help with all of that. Um, LastPass is uniquely set up to, for that pervasive passwordless protection. Our marketing team loves alliterations uh, for every user, department, and application in your organization. LastPass offers enterprise-grade password protection with hands-on support to in, uh, ensure a simple, quick deployment uh, for you and your end users, and is built on a zero-knowledge model to keep your data protected. Zero-knowledge mean we'll never know your passwords. We don't want to know your passwords. Damien will never know your usernames or your passwords. This is all encrypted on the local device. The only thing that's backed up is this big giant blob of unconnected information. It's not connected until it's decrypted on your local device. So nobody will have access to it. Um, you're only as successful as your employees using the tools you give them. And LastPass offers a convenient experience that users love, uh, which we hear time and time again from customers. Every time I have uh, traveling at events and shows and demos and stuff, People all the time say, hey, I'm already using it for my personal life and I love it. You have visibility into the adoption of your users with ability to report on license usage, engage them in the product and more. The admin ma management is one of the best out there with the policies that you can customize your control or use the out-of-box policies we recommend plus reporting for audits and compliances. There's about 120 plus different policies there. So Damian coming in and working with you all can really shape that environment that fits your needs specifically. Because the problem is sometimes everybody wants to say, hey, I'll just go ahead and lock down everything. I'll put all 120 policies on there and make it a miserable experience to use, but everything's secure. You can overdo it sometimes. But the great thing is you can really take these policies, customize it to what's best for your clients and what's best for your use and gaining that trust that your information is going to be secure and people are going to want to use it. 
Finally, you can score and measure your activity to take it to the next level of protecting your credentials through the dark web alerts and policies. So it'll show you right there that, hey, I have all my passwords saved in there, 80 or 90 or whatever the average is that people have now. And it gives me a security score of 60 because I have I've used the same password, you know, Mr. Muffins 24 for my password 15 times. It'll go in, help you change that password and then generate a unique password that you won't remember that is into your vault. So that way these long, random, nonsensical passwords are gonna be the, and they're unique to each login is the most secure way. And LastPass makes it easy to do that because I can just grab my iPhone or get on my laptop or whatever it is, click launch, I'm in the PAPS application, it will autofill it in, I'll never need to know it. I just need to know one password to log in, or if I have passwordless access up to my vault, I don't even need to know that other than the first time I set it up. At the end of the day, why LastPass? We are the solution that is built for businesses with our admin control policies and reporting, which is why we're embraced by over 100,000 different businesses globally. Built uniquely, our end users love LastPass, which keeps them coming back um, to use the tool day after day. And we also, you know, we have a great relationship working with Damien, with him and his team. So as there's questions or as things come up, he's working with us directly to make sure you all are taken care of. But that's all I got. Perfect. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, you know, an organization as an, as an individual that uses it every day. You know, I know we have uh, incredible success with LastPass. We absolutely love it. And it's been a huge boon to, you know, for us just to keep everything uh, really, I mean, organized and, and sure. stored somewhere safe. So perfect. Well, we've got a few questions here uh, in the chat. And so we'll just kind of run those by you here quick. Yeah. So the first one is, what would the difference be between, say, getting LastPass through Silicon Plains and going on LastPass and getting just like a free personal account? So a couple of things to that. One is it's not managed. So it may not have the right policies just kind of out of the gate as a free individual personal user. And, you know, I use it, the, the personal version for my, you know, for my Facebook and for, you know, a lot of the other things, my banking accounts and all that stuff. But that's my personal life. What you don't want to have is my personal stuff mixed in with your work stuff and then not having control of that work stuff. So, you know, if I leave and you say, hey, Damien, Brad left, he has access to some passwords there. I need you to go in and log him out. You won't have that control or that insight. Those passwords leave with me. So unless you're able to go into some of these websites and or these banking apps and make all these other phone calls and do all these things, that creates a lot of work. That, you know, that could be 30, 40 different passwords that you then have to go in and change individually versus being in that managed environment. Again, this is talking about where I kind of made the analogy earlier of having those keys to the company car. Those are still in your possession. So when I leave, all that information, all that control, all that security remains in your possession. You can force a logout and force that master password change where I can't get back in. So you're making one step versus having to make an hour or two hours worth of work trying to go back in and fix that. So again, it comes down to that security and, and controlling of your company information. That's intellectual property, you know, this password. So that leaves you in control. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a that's a terrific tool. Why couldn't someone use just, for example, like a free password keeper like in Apple or in Chrome as opposed to LastPass? Yeah, so again, uh, a couple of the things I think about with that. So with Chrome, Chrome syncs. And Chrome isn't always, you don't have to have a password to obviously open up Chrome. So let's say if I have my Chrome set up and I have it, like my personal use, I have it syncing from my phone to my gaming PC to a laptop I have in the living room. Maybe I went to a friend's house and logged into my Gmail. That all syncs everywhere you go. And it's not encrypted. It's not password protected. There's a lot of, again, those things that you can't really control when it comes to that. Um, so again, who knows how that has access to it? Like I said earlier, where there was an individual where their Gmail account led to a, a um, an event for a municipality. And so if they log into it and they log into their Gmail and they log into their Chrome and all the encrypted, unencrypted data is just sitting right there for them when it comes to any of the passwords or like secure, any kind of notes or payment cards, anything that could be sitting in that is all unencrypted data at that point. So and like the thing about with Apple as well is, you know, if you gave somebody a MacBook or an iPad at work, would you let them use their personal Apple credentials? And then they hand it back to you and that MacBook is now, you can't do anything with it because it's in somebody else's name. 
or you have all that other stuff. So by letting people, again, using personal things like Keychain or some of these other things that are very convenient that are built in, but are more suited to personal use, you're putting your company at, at risk. Excellent. Um, can someone still access their passwords, say if they're offline or out of the office or, hey, even if their internet goes down? Yeah, absolutely. So that's the nice thing about the way this is designed. It's designed for that work environment with thought. So that's where I talk about everything is encrypted on the local device and it's backed up to the cloud. So there is a cloud component there, but you're not running purely from the cloud. So as long as you've logged into that um, at least once on that device with your device or within your computer or what have you, and you that, that encryption of your data is still decrypted on the local device. So there's a copy of it sitting there. And when you log into it, and you'd put in your credentials to uh, to um, to decrypt it and all that stuff is available, that doesn't matter whether you're online or not. So you still have access to that. So if you are in a flight and let's say you need to log into something or you know just those different scenarios that you can think of, you'll still have access to your information. Okay, excellent. So another question here I've got for you is, how easy is it to use LastPass? And what I mean by that is obviously, you know, Silicon Plains helps with implementation, getting it rolled out, getting it installed. But in terms of, hey, we've got LastPass, we come into the office, what does that look like from an ease and really from a, a time perspective? Once you have it up and running, and a couple of things is nice. One is, let's say if I'm a new user and I get set up, I log into something, LastPass will pop up and say, do you want to save this to your vault? I click yes. So as I'm using it, it's in, it's vacuuming up all those passwords. Let's say you have, you're moving over from something else. Let's say if you did have them in Google Chrome, you export that into a CSV file. I can import that into LastPass. LastPass has all those passwords at that point. Let's say, you know, fast forward a little bit. And as you've been logging into things, it's saying, hey, you probably want to update this password. So you go through and you're changing and you're using it. And you're kind of just using it during normal business. And it's improving just through normal business. At that point, it can be as simple as, I click on something, my phone sends me a challenge, I'm in, I click launch on a password and I'm into that site, it's that simple, one or two clicks. You don't have to do a big step or the vault lives there as a browser extension that you can type in the name of the, the website you wanna go to, let's say it's LinkedIn. I type in LinkedIn, the LinkedIn thing pops up, I click launch and it launches LinkedIn and logs me in automatically and I'm in. So it makes it very easy to use for the end user and easy to get it established and built to the correct with the, all the good information like most things junk in junk out but long as you're putting good information in and you're using it and you're using it correctly it's very simple at that point and same thing with sharing if i want to be able to share a password i go in i can create a folder and choose who sees it i can choose what they see i can block out the password where all they can do is click launch and they can't change it and then if i want to revoke that access i just revoke the access and pull it back it's that simple or if i just want to share one password i choose the email that i want to share it to and what policy permissions that damien has set up that when you share it's already going to be shared in a uh, secure style and i click share and they automatically see it in their vault so it's very simple to use very simple to share passwords without exposing and and run from there i mean i honestly i use it pretty much um absent-mindedly now i don't have to think about when i'm using it yeah, absolutely. You know, I know like I, as someone who uses it every single day, I mean, it seriously takes like under a minute's worth of time every single day um, to get up and running. It's incredibly time efficient and not some big, uh, not a big burden at all. Yep, um, absolutely. Last question that I had here for you. So if yeah. you could narrow the whole presentation down to one big bullet point, what's the number one thing that you hope that people who watch this take from this workshop? As simple as it sounds, like I know there's more exciting, like there's firewalls and there's endpoint protection and all these big things that are super important. Something as simple as a password is going to sink you every time. That stuff is only as good as your behaviors. So if you can get something to where you're using LastPass into your company, that's a much more important level of protection than maybe you give it credit. Um, because passwords are something we've had, you know, how I go, go back to our Apple II days, and we're all playing lemonade stand in the computer lab in, in school, if that's not going too far back for some people, or Oregon Trail. It, that's, we started probably with passwords then. So it's, it's, it's like one of those things where I use it every day, you start to think about it just being something small and basic, but that small and basic thing can be one of the biggest weak points in your company's protection 
which then means your cost, you're, you're going to have costs for employees. You're going to have costs for your clients, whether that's a total economical cost or even as a reputation cost. So something as simple as a password protector like LastPass to manage your environment, manage your policies. That's the big thing that I take away that maybe it sounds like a small thing that I'll do later, but it's really very important. Perfect. Well, that's all the questions I've got here for you, Brad. I really appreciate you taking the time and you know, thank you everybody for tuning in and watching this. Um, that'll wrap everything up, but I hope everybody has a you know great rest of your day and a happy holidays. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you again for giving me the opportunity to be with you today.